2048, the second volume in the Brushfire thriller series, takes place in the not-so-distant future. In the second half of the 21st century, the War of Ideas took place. The creation of Second Realms and individualist decentralized freedom cells spread across geographical regions, and the practical ideas of liberty, voluntary interaction, and peace took hold. The Free Society in 2048 is loosely based on Samuel E. Konkin III's Phases of Agorism, in which the destruction of the state would be realistically accomplished through the establishment of pockets of free individuals, black and gray markets, and the spreading of the ideas of freedom and liberty, until the demand for an overarching state was no longer perceived as essential, and individualism and voluntary interaction prevailed. The original creators of the freedom cells who led the world to a better place are still scattered about living their lives, including Maxine, the late Henry Tucker's love, and the now washed up but stubborn punk rocker Warren, still reside in the Appalachian Mountains. Maxine's nephew, Vince, and his boy Tommy, who had been van nomads ever since Tommy's mom left to pursue a materialistic quest for fortune in the never-ending rat race, went to visit Auntie Max on her homestead on Jim Mountain Road. Although Max is very happy for the visit, she has an ulterior motive. Her close friend she met during her revolutionary days, Isaac Hopper, is trapped in a geographical area previously known as New York City, now known as the State Zone. The State Zone is one of only a handful of remnant states where an overarching power-hungry government rules over its citizens with aggressive force. Together, Warren, Vince, and Tommy team up and use their knowledge, including advanced hacking techniques, low-tech ciphers, IRC encrypted chat, and cryptocurrencies to infiltrate and evade the authorities in the State Zone and bring back Isaac to freedom. But their mission, the rescue of Isaac, Auntie Max's close friend and confidant, isn't going to be easy. They are up against a powerful authoritarian Hydra state, a massive surveillance apparatus, a relentless and murderous police state, and a propaganda arm that will not stop until extremist terrorists known as the Trio, Warren, Vince, and Tommy, are brought to justice. Will the Trio pull off the rescue of Max's longtime friend, Isaac Hopper? Will the forces of good, free individuals, prevail against the safest forces of evil? Find out in the second volume of the Brushfire Thriller series, 2048, available exclusively via Liberty Attack Publications. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048, or snag them both in the Brushfire bundle. libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048 bundle. Liberty Attack Publications, share your story, find your freedom. Without, without telling them, so um, this will go out on, okay. on okay, all the outlets. Good to know. Recording has started. So, um, all right. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'll do a, a quick uh, introduction and maybe we'll get uh, another person or two to hop in here. But uh, all right, where's the right outline here? Here we go. All right. And welcome to this special presentation of the Vonu podcast and Liberty Attack Publications. Uh, I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, you can learn more about and uh, join the Second Realm Network by visiting pasnia.com. Uh, but today I come to you with another LUA Publications uh, book release live stream. And uh, with that, I'm very, very proud to announce uh, the official release of Matthew Wateki's newest book uh, in his Brushfire thriller series, uh, 2048. Uh, if you're at Brushfire and are ready to snag your copy today, uh, you can find that by visiting libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Uh, again, that link is libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Uh, you also find the Amazon link there in a day or two. Uh, but we do always prefer and appreciate uh, when you order directly from us. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to order the Brushfire Bundle, uh, which features the two books we'll, uh, we'll talk about today, uh, you can do so at libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048 bundle. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Matthew, uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome back, man. It's, uh, it's great to have you. How are things going? Good, good. Yeah, thanks for having me, Shane. Um, it, uh, it's going, going really well. I'm really happy to get this uh, newest book out, um, 2048. So it's a it's like the second volume in the uh, brush fur series. So really excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I guess first off, mate, I want to, I want to thank you for publishing with us, with us again. It's uh, you know, been an honor and a pleasure working with you uh, on getting to this point, uh, the release date. Uh, I, I know I'm really happy with it and uh, you yeah. just got to, you know, salute you. Great, great, great job. Sure. And uh, obviously thanks for your contribution to uh, second home culture. Um, there's uh yeah, as uh one of our guests here at the uh at the at the uh, Jitsi book release uh, party 
um, Todd Borjo, the author of the Evolution Trilogy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of anarchist fiction authors out there. And uh, hashtag Agora, <laughs> the author's anonymous, so you can't, you don't even, we don't even know who the hell it is. So um, it's, uh, it's yeah. uh, definitely always great to see contributions uh, and to second realm culture uh, in this manner. Yeah, it's it's growing though. There there are more now than there were a few years ago. So it's uh just have to be patient and more people start creating content al along the same lines, I think. Right, right. Yeah, I mean uh like like you were saying, you know, it's uh it kind of makes you wonder though with like what some of the sci-fi um that's come out is is pretty decent but other other times it's kind of makes you scratch your head like um you know it's a good like that's a good medium to just kind of play with uh different types of uh you know um like uh so, you know um self-reliance and uh all those types of ideas that we uh that we um that we have here so it's um you know like the some of the main or mainstream ideas uh it's like they they totally kind of missed the point with some of that so it's good to just uh um just kind of get that out there and uh you're talking about mainstream science fiction yeah you know like star trek yep. and uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all, all the big hollywood stuff yeah like we, we got a you know, we we found this new world, but we just have, we automatically have to colonize it and make it like <laughs> our government. So, <laughs> well, yeah, stuff like stuff like that, uh, like the big mainstream science fiction. I I would say that messages of statism are purposely put in there in order to uh, continue that agenda. Yeah, it's it's not an accident that all of the fiction out there has the state existing and being, uh, you know, on some level the good guy. <laughs> it's it's right. terrible, you know. Yeah. Right. And right. Even, yeah. Even that's kind of uh, what I wanted. To, like, yeah, go, ahead. go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, I that's what I was trying to convey to with the, both of these books um, was, and especially in twenty forty eight was. Um, it's really like with this book, it's um, it's like wh where do where do I vision the ideal like uh, the ideal society, um, and so that's why that's where I sort of uh, that's how I created the world in twenty forty eight the the state free society um, that's in there, um, and so it's kind of the opposite of, of uh, some of the or most of <laughs> most of the fiction out there, which is. <laughs> uh it's like um they live in a free society and and the status society is is that out of the ordinary so right <laughs> right the exact opposite of the mainstream yeah uh, narratives <laughs> right yeah yeah so can i ask you a question about that actually oh yeah sure yeah so in 2048 you're saying that uh, kind of an anarchistic, uh, agoristic society already exists and is the majority, and yeah, then no, statism is kind of a minority. Still, yeah, is there's, that... a, there's pockets of statism. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, uh, so th there's um, at some point in the 21st century, the early 21st century, there was like a war of ideas, and also. Um, the basically the uh the evolution of agorism took place so like the phases of agorism took place i i kind of get into it a little bit um but i didn't spend a lot of detail on how they got there but just that they are they are there in the free society and how they're living and you know uh some of the off-grid homesteads um uh like Warren's character, basically he lives, um, you know, he has a homestead and he has for, for several decades and he's living peacefully, um, you know, in that society. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're offering an alternative, uh, complete societal view, which is very mm -hmm. rare, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, which is great. It's very unique and it needs to be out there. So I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, and then uh, not to give too much away or not to give, not to spoil anything, but they do end up going on 
uh, a quest um, or entering uh, what's called what I call the state zone in the, in the book, um, and that's basically like uh, what would be considered um, New York City, uh, like in real life, but it's um, in this in 2048. It's basically um, that's basically one of the one of the few areas that's still occupied by a status central government. And so um, they they have to, this uh, these characters have to go, despite um, it being very dangerous, uh, have to go into the state zone and rescue um, another character in there that's kind of caught up in in the in state zone culture. So. So they have to kind of go confront some <laughs> things that they're not yeah. accustomed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I like the premise. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I might add just to, to draw a further distinction between, um, you know, whether it's mainstream science fiction or even just, uh, you know, mainstream entertainment in general, like they, they may, they may dispel some right. truths in there, but um, as you guys are both kind of, you know, I guess alluding to or pointing out, um, you know, the, the state is the state's the, you know, the, um, the normal and the good. <clears throat> And, and if it's not, and it's more like dystopian, then it's just kind of hopeless. Like there's no solutions really um, presented. So that's why I really appreciate the, the realm of, of anarchist fiction, because um, there's always seems to be solutions, um, solutions in there. So um, and, you know, actual like, you know, actual, you know, hope, hopefulness um, at the end, because I definitely don't yeah. see I definitely don't see just, uh, um, you know, statism as the statism and coercion is the only out is the only possible outcome. I see a, I think we all see a different way. Right. Yeah. And I think we talked a little bit before about it, just the idea of using the, this as like a medium to uh, to show, I guess, in fictional societies that things, you know, could be possible or at least make people wonder, uh, hey, can we, you know, can I do this in real life? Can I become more self-sustainable in, in real life? Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to draw a parallel in with uh, – with 2048, um, in Brushfire, I think it was more of like sort of a, um, I guess like a matrix type of a moment where, um, you know, Henry finds this book and he's suddenly like awakened to the fact that his he's living in a uh, like a dystopian hellhole. <laughs> so, um, but like in 2048, it's sort of uh, um, I wanted to play with the idea that. Um, you know, uh, this is where this is where I want to live, basically, and this is the world I want to go in when I read like a fiction story or something. I want to just escape from from you know to serve our society for a while, um, and hopefully, uh, when people read it, they'll they'll be able to to like kind of get that get that escape, I guess, and then um, and then also, like I said, you know, with drawing. Uh, parallels to real life. Um, no, I, de I definitely, in this one, I use uh, plenty of um, like real life uh, agris like uh, methods and homesteading. And um, and then uh, also like the, the freedom cell idea comes up again too um, in this one, so. C can I ask you, did you start writing anarchist fiction just with one of the ideas in mind to actually plant seeds of liberty uh through a fictional means and, and if you did uh wh why why do you think that's an effective way to reach people because i have my own mm. uh thoughts on this and i just okay. wanted to ask you and see what what your outlook is yeah i i definitely uh i definitely plant plant some ideas uh especially like in brushfire um mm. and the interesting thing about brushfire was uh i think uh i was still kind of going through my own evolution when i wrote the first one um so it was very interesting to kind of be re you know reading and researching and you know i think at the time um that was uh, sort of the tail end of the uh Liberty Under Attack podcast, and then the, and then when you recently like when you guys dis, or when Shane discovered the, the Vanu strategy that was kind of um, that kind of like helped, helped me evolve personally. But then also I was uh, still in the middle of writing the book, so um, 
so that was <laughs> as kind of a coincidence but uh but but i think i was able to um um kind of uh make sort of make it sort of relatable to somebody that um you know maybe just works like a nine to five job and goes home and and watches movies and uh does it all over again to get exactly the- <laughs> you're you're trying to reach the i i don't like to use terms like this but for lack of a better word uh, you're trying to reach the normies basically yeah. <laughs> like right. some some guy like you said works nine to five and just wants to read uh, a fiction book to un- to unwind and relax yeah mm-hmm. sure uh yeah that's that was my one of my main reasons for starting to write anarchist fiction as well and another reason is that people are more receptive to these ideas if it's in a fictional format yeah. And this right. this is well known in psychology <laughs> circles. I mean, mm-hmm. if you try to wake people up with just straight facts, they can yeah. get very defensive. And if but if it's just a little seed planted in a mm-hmm. in a harmless fiction book, then they're more receptive to it. They're not they're not on the defensive. So that's that's a big reason I started doing it cuz it it's very it almost doesn't exist. It's a very small genre at this point. So there's an opportunity there to to create more and to reach more people through that medium. Right. Yeah. T- totally agree. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I like I like everything I've heard so far. So and, and I guess you you kind of are you you, you already answered. Uh, um, I was going to ask you. Yeah, that was so. Yeah, Todd. Good. Uh, good question on that one. Um, I guess uh, you talked about Brushfire a little bit. Uh, um, it it is the first book in the series. Um, do you want to provide a brief introduction to mm-hmm. Brushfire, and then we can we can get more into um, and to what you, uh, you know, what's new in 2048? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so Brushfire is the first, uh, first volume in the, in the series, the two, two parts so far. Um, and, uh, basically, um, it starts off, um, you know, Hen- Henry Tucker is like kind of the main, uh, uh, protagonist in this, uh, story. He, he works at a, um, like an antique mall. <laughs> um, and so it's a, it's kind of a perfect place to really, uh, um, I guess, bring in certain items and certain characters that come into the store and everything. Um, and also, um, you know, at some point he, he hooks up with this, uh, character Winston, who, uh, is kind of a, Kind of an off the wall character, more of like a uh, just a wild um, wild card, I guess. Uh, and um, I guess he would, in this case, he he would be more of like the agorist. Winston would be. Um, and so Henry's, I guess, like with his limited, I guess, uh, um, the amount of people that he socializes with, he basically just goes home and you know gets drunk and uh gets a paycheck he maybe socializes with someone at work or whatever but he i guess like he meets this winston character and uh and then um you know really opens up his worldview but winston ends up um getting into some trouble with the law and then um and then you know at some point um he has a a, like this mysterious delivery uh to uh henry's um antique shop Um, which is this uh, book called The Long Plan. Um, Basically, this is a this long plan is is like a uh, a book that is used by the ruling class to uh, to kind of describe how they're going to to, I guess, take over or further like subjugate the the people or the, you know, the the cattle, I guess, (laughs) if you will. (laughs) But um, this is, I guess, used as sort of like a red pill um, in the book to kind of uh, uh, wake Henry up, um, I guess, uh, within, you know, a couple of chapters. Um, I know I, I realize that it's not maybe realistic in real life, but uh, I think it was a good way to just kind of... Uh, um, use it as sort of like an immediate wake up kind of, um, not necessarily like it, like, like, I guess in reality, like this would have taken somebody maybe, you know, a few years. I know it took for me, it took uh, a couple years to just sort of, um, 
accept uh, some of the facts that I was reading. Um, but I think uh, I think it was a good way to, to do that. And then I use that sort of um, as like kind of a tool throughout um, this book and 2048 to uh, basically um, describe uh, like what the ruling classes uh, plans are for uh, for taking over I guess um, and there's like some passages in brush fire but I don't go into like exactly the entire lung plan I guess um, we kind of can assume uh, what that what that is like um, it's just to kind of keep people asleep and um, uh, you know not look into facts and detail um, and uh, just kind of, uh, you know, basically be revenue generators. <laughs> um, so, so I guess uh, na like this this uh, long plan in Brush Fire basically, um, it's not it wasn't supposed to get out, but somehow Winston was able to get his hands on it, and he he sent a copy to you know to Henry um, basically you know. Um, not necessarily point like i guess like hit, he hid it in a shipment of other books and was hoping that henry would find it so it was sort of like uh um you know henry had to kind of make some effort to uh to uncover this and i do kind of describe henry as like a character that's very like over overly curious um him working at like a at like an antique uh shop or whatever and just um you know, like kind of uh, reading on the job and stuff like that. Like his his head is kind of elsewhere, I guess, while he should be working, <laughs> sort of a sort of a thing. Um, but yeah, like I mean, because the ruling class uh, um, they find out that this uh, book has somehow found its way, um, you know, out, and it, you know, they don't they don't want their plans to be uncovered, so. They send out like a couple of their minions to uh, to like try to uncover the book and also to um, to like find Henry. But I guess like Henry gets tipped off um, um, and then is basically on the run uh, for I think um, you know for the rest of the basically the rest of the book. Um, and uh, at some point he does hook up with a freedom cell. Um, and so these freedom cells do exist in brush fire, um, in that society. Um, and, uh, at that point I am able to take, to like play with some ideas like a low tech, um, encryption methods through like, uh, um, like he basically, uh, leaves a message in like an unmarked mailbox or something, which is like a, using a, using like a cipher and then uh that's how they found like the location of their next meetup so <laughs> um it was interesting to play with those ideas um and then you know obviously like the freedom cell idea is really like throughout this volume and the second book um because i think that's like I think that's really one of the mo more uh, effective methods that, that we have in real life, you know, um, just like that yeah, decentralized uh, freedom cell idea. Um, so I wanted to just make an effort to include that um, because I think it's, you know, definitely uh, effective. Um, and then, uh, you know, at the, at the end, um, I guess, like, for those of you who haven't read it, like, um, not to spoil anything, but, um, it does get quite a bit worse <laughs> at the end of Brush Fire. I think, uh, like I know, um, when I was talking at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, um, like one person pointed out that def that this, that Brush Fire's ending was very, like, especially, um, grim and like, <laughs> so, so I said, uh. You know, it's kind of that one of those plots where everything kind of falls apart in the end. Um, but then there's still this this kind of glimmer of hope, I guess, through with this uh, pocket of freedom, freedom cell, um, which then like, uh, you know, some of the characters uh, 
are I use in the second volume. So, um, and also like kind of continue the storyline um, in that book too. So, mm -hmm. very good, very good. So, I guess the um, a question that I that I guess that I would be definitely interested in if I was you know listening to this right now is um, you mentioned a couple of the concepts that that you that you talked about in Brushfire, freedom cells, you know, um, I guess security culture, the low tech encryption. Um, I guess uh, uh, you, these are so. You definitely still drew upon these ideas in 2048, but um, what new ideas, or I guess uh, um, li like liberated lifestyles, or what new uh, freedom strategies uh, made it into 2048? Okay, yeah. So I mean, definitely the the crypto anarchy is a big part of 2048 too, um, and I, I tried to accurately portray portray that. Um, with uh, some of the methods that they use, like uh, they definitely use um, some, uh, um, like some uh, encrypted chats uh, in um, in 2048, and also uh, the hack the hacking methods that they use. Um, some of those, uh, I think the ghost phone makes it into the 2048. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is uh, I think available now. Some of those uh, are available from Jamin on on your website. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like um, wanted to include some of those methods, like the crypto anarchy methods. Also, um, there's another like lower tech uh, cipher that they use. Um, I guess on top of uh, of like some of the hacking that they do. So um, you know, it, like in 2048. Uh, they, in order to, I guess, like, um, gain access to the state zone, uh, uh, Warren, who is, Warren, who is in Brushfire, is also in 2048. He's, <laughs> he's aged quite a bit, but, uh, <laughs> but he's still, I think, a lovable character. Um, he's a crypto anarchist. Um, he's very rebellious, um, and he's just, a uh, like kind of just an overall like smart ass type of a guy <laughs> um, that just like does what he wants. Um, so uh, that Warren and, or uh, I mean, uh, Vince and Tommy who, uh, Vince is a, um, is a van nomad and Tommy is his uh, kind of like his teenage son. So that those are uh, kind of the main characters in there. Um, uh, Maxine who is in Brushfire uh, who is like a was a waitress in Brushfire, and uh, basically Henry hooked up with uh, with Maxine, and then Maxine in Brushfire ended up like reading the book um, and uh, you know the long plan, and um, basically was also awakened. So he let so Maxine um, follows Henry uh, and sort of. Um, you know, hooks up with the freedom cell in the in the first book. Um, so Maxine is uh, is in the is in twenty forty eight, and and they and the book starts out um, where uh, Tommy and Vince are you know driving to Max's homestead to uh, you know just to visit. Um, they are related, so like Vince and Tommy. Uh, this is like Maxine is their aunt, so. Uh, um, she, you know, Maxine is obviously like in 2048, the characters that have survived um, the first book are quite a bit older. So, so um, they've sort of kind of, they've sort of uh, carried on the legacy of the, of those ideas um, and sort of just um, into the second, second book. But uh, yeah, like a lot of the the, like the encryption methods, um, like uh, hacking techniques, the crypto, um, crypto mining, um, as well as like that combination of uh, of the homesteading, um, uh, self self sustainability aspect um, with like the the uh, garden and stuff. So, you know, Warren, Warren uh, has his homestead and he loves his garden and his chickens and uh, <laughs> so. So, um, but, um, but I think, you know, that I tried to make the characters, uh, um, I guess, uh, 
identifiable um, within the within the second one too. So, yeah. Fantastic. Could I ask a question real quick regarding the technology? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, so, who in 2048 has a higher degree of technology developed? Is it anarchists or statists? Is there um, a degree of separation in yeah. the technology, or is it more or less the same? It's a, that's a good question. So, uh, so in 2048, um, it the answer would be both. Uh, this the um, the free society has. Uh, master technology and is able to use it like um for example like warren is uh warren has um access to those tools um and and uh so they i do spend quite a bit of time with uh with warren vince and tommy um trying to i guess like uh hack into some of the um servers in the state zone. Um, so the state zone basically, I guess it's typical with uh, reality right now is that um, you have this like overarching government um, that has access to technology and um, just has like a very, is, you know, they basically have unlimited funds for use with um, building just this like massive surveillance apparatus. So I try to emphasize that in there. Um, that they have, uh, that they're just um, building, basically building these redundant server farms in uh, different areas of the state zone, um, and this with the sole purpose of like spying on citizens. So uh, they, I try to <laughs> like I try, like I guess there's no shortage of material because all I have to do is just like see what's happening in real life and then. <laughs> So, like, I try to maybe just maybe loosely base the technology that the state zone uses off of, like, s some of the massive, like, server farms that are being, um, or not being, but have already been uh, uh, built in, uh, like, Utah and stuff for the NSA. Um, and then, like, the kind of the, um, I guess what it, the forget what it's called but it's like the intercontinental uh like the five eyes type of a setup i guess where um state zones coordinate their uh um surveillance to like um spy on every aspect of somebody's life you know so so i think uh in 2048 um I use like the hacking techniques um, to to where like Warren's able to forge a uh, like a even like a diplomatic um, passport that's like digital and then also very good yeah <laughs> <laughs> very nice yes okay yeah and then also um, he's able to like so one of the predictions I think um, that I made in 2040 is that pretty soon we're gonna have Fed coin. So, like, I make that kind of just the norm in the state zone that everybody uses Fed coin, and it's like this, like, basically this, like, shit coin, um, <laughs> where it's like based off of nothing. So I really just like uh, make it sort of a joke where, like, Warren's able to just like mine a ton of Fed coin, and like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like I just pulled this out of thin air. Like, it's very uh, <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, in that, in the Fed coin, like I, I kind of describe it when people are paying for things in the state zone, um, that, you know, the feds are able to keep a really tight knit on, uh, like the transactions. Um, that's one of the ways they, they found, uh, like later on in that book, there's, it's like, that's how they were able to locate one of the characters is, uh, through, um, you know, using the Fed coin transactions. Um, yeah, like they were able to just immediately find uh, find him because he like made a transaction somewhere, so. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Um, well, looks like uh, Jackie joined. Welcome to uh, the 2048 uh, Booker Lee's live stream, Jackie. 
Okay. Um, so I guess uh, the next question. The next He's question. on mute. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, so I guess just a, a general question that that uh, I guess I'm curious. Um, curious of. I've, I'm get, I'm close. I've I've only got like a chapter or two to finish finish my first piece of anarchist fiction. But you've you finished two, um, you know, two books. Um, what uh, what have you learned? Uh, you know, through the through the writing process. And um, I guess uh, you know what uh, advice would you give to um, you know new authors who are looking to get into this uh, this field of writing? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, so I think uh, maybe some of the challenges that I had really was I think you just need to find find the time to uh, to write a little bit um, consistently. Um, that was one of the things that I that I just sort of made a commitment to that uh, this is like really important to me. So I wanted to just devote, you know, um, like to say, Hey, I feel like writing a chapter or something. So uh, like, I want to, I wanted to do that like a little bit each week. And then, you know, um, I think uh, the first one, um, first one definitely took a lot longer, I think, because I didn't know, that, that's the first fiction book I've ever written, so it was kind of uh, a little bit more difficult. I, I think I started writing like I started writing it like an iPad or something, um, which is it's not it's not recommended. <laughs> and then uh, and then like I was able to somehow um, like I got a laptop um, and then just continued on there. But but yeah, like I mean, like I was I guess like I didn't when I first started, I didn't really have much conviction, I guess. Like, Hey, if this, if this doesn't, like, I didn't know it was going to actually turn into the finished book. Um, so, uh, um, it's, it was good that I was able to just follow, follow it through, I guess. Um, and you know, it may, w may well haven't like it, like it, uh, it couldn't have played out. Like it could have just, um, you know, been, uh, like not a good idea or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I had that idea and I just kind of ran with it. And that's, I think, uh, I think that's just kind of what you have to do. Um, I know, I know like there are different writing styles and there's different styles that, that, uh, people use just depending on whatever makes you feel more comfortable. I think, uh, for for me, like I don't I don't like uh, using any type of notes or anything. I know like some people try to, um, you know, like uh, chart out their plots and you know this is what I'm going to do or whatever. But I guess uh, what I did was I I did I did like short of just like kind of writing out some of the characters that I wanted to use and like their first and last names. Um, I really just kind of uh, did a lot of like meditating and just uh, going like going on walks and stuff. Um, that's really what that's really what helped me um, develop like the writing is uh, like I would just um, go on a hike or something, be in the woods and uh, or just somewhere with quiet, you know, just away from the noise. And uh, mm -hmm. it really, I think, helped helped a lot. <laughs> Um, and then another thing I, th I think we talked about it a little bit was just like, you know, um, trying to get away from, uh, some of the propaganda and stuff, uh, um, really just, uh, um, not just like, um, totally cutting yourself off from the news and social media. Um, because like, um, whether you like it or, or not, I think, uh, um, your mind does like absorb a lot of that information and um it does like i found i found that it was even coming out in the writing and there were several like chapters that i had to rewrite because mm -hmm. uh it was <laughs> like just subconsciously came came out in there and, and they weren't my ideas at all it was kind of scary but uh then i was like i just gotta completely um cut that off you know so yeah 
Yeah, well said, especially on that uh, on that last point. Um, yeah, I'm definitely definitely with you on that one. Um, and I will, I guess, I will mention just for uh, for the for the podcast and uh, and video viewers, uh, if you're interested in picking up a uh, 2048 libertyunderattack dot com forward slash 2048, uh, or if you'd like to pick up the uh, Brushfire bundle, uh, libertyunderattack dot com forward slash 2048 uh, bundle. So I guess uh, just out of curiosity, I, I mean, it's uh, you know the I know uh, quite a, quite a few people uh, really enjoyed the first audiobook. Um, so uh, you know, what are your plans for uh, in, in that direction for this one? Um, yeah, like I definitely, I would definitely like to to do a, an audiobook for this one too. Um, I think it just depends on <laughs> the willingness of the. Uh, um, of the cast that we had last time, um, see if uh, Silas wants to <laughs> wants to commit to that again. <laughs> um, I know it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of work last time, but it definitely turned out great, and I was, you know, I was really happy with it. Uh, I know Todd, you said uh, it was your first first audio book, so <laughs> hopefully it was. And you know, that was the first time I heard Silas. And he definitely has the voice for it. He's yeah. very talented with that. I was I was very impressed. <laughs> That's yeah, of... it, yeah. I definitely um, right. Like I know I don't listen to audiobooks too often, but I know um, it definitely like this one definitely was great because you know he had all the different voices uh, um, covered, uh, which was which which was great and. Uh, and then um, Aura, I think, uh, had some parts in there too. So, mm -hmm. see, I've never, I've never had an audiobook done, and I'm, I'm kind of curious. How long was the time frame to get that done? Just like a general idea, because I've never finish, done it before. I don't um, have any audiobooks. Yeah. So, so narrating isn't really narrating. Really, isn't like the worst part of it is the post production. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Um, like it, so it took, um, it, it usually takes us like probably nine, nine months, nine to 12 months for the, for the paperback, um, to get that ready. I, I, I don't know how long did it take him? Was it like, mm -hmm. it was like six months for the whole process? Maybe it's just off the top of my head. So yeah. I, I know he said it was quite long and, um, I imagine it's a tedious yeah. process yeah. and very time consuming is why I ask. Yeah. Right, and I know, like he said that uh, he said that, um, to, like, it's some of those characters have like very gritty voices, and I think like he was, uh, <laughs> he like was in the like the process of quitting smoking or something. I said <laughs> you're, you're gonna, you're just gonna have to keep smoking until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll help with the grit for sure. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, uh, fantastic. So I guess um, we do have do uh, do have uh, one set of uh, the Brushfire bundle to give away. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't even really think about. It. I think last time we uh, um, I, we didn't even talk about a, I guess a method of uh, distributing these uh, or choosing the uh, the winner for this. Um, and I guess there's uh, you know there's two. Maybe you maybe you just uh, choose a number or something. I don't know. What do you think? Or I guess we just get we just give Brushfire bundles to both of them. Call it good. <laughs> yeah, sh yeah, that that works. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to send me one, I would be honored. That that's fantastic. Right on. Well, yeah, we definitely we'd... like the money for the second book for sure. I'll put that at the top of my reading list. Right on. Well, nice. <laughs> I de definitely appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys coming. We have first. Uh, we're going to do a live stream, but I figured, like you know, digital second realm and all. I think it's Jitsi's more in line with uh, like a Jitsi. Uh, you know, live book release yeah. party is definitely more in line with. I could see a lot of characters in your book doing something like this. I guess put it that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I saw the. Uh, I saw the. What is it? Um, ZRTP or something. It's. Uh, pretty solid so right yeah yep that is uh that's that is uh true and completely open source so um peer to yeah peer to peer video calls it's incredible absolutely incredible so anyway to not talk All about right. jitsi more we're here to talk about uh, about uh, your books matt <laughs> um i don't have any any other uh, any other any other questions uh, off the top of my head um, but was there anything else you wanted to tell people about uh, brushfire 2048 or uh 
um, you know, the, the writing process or just uh, whatever you like? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I guess one thing about 2048 um, and was that uh, I guess like the names of the characters, um, I sort of, uh, um, there's some meaning behind those. So I guess uh, I just sort of leave it up to the reader. Um, you know, uh, at some point, somebody's bound to uh, Google the name of, of some of the characters. <laughs> and uh, that's also like kind of an Easter egg in there, too. Um, so I think like just to give one of them away, I guess, uh, like Isaac Hopper um, is like a abolitionist. So um, that's kind of, uh, and then I think also it's, it sort of has like uh, some religious un undertones too, I think, because he, Isaac kind of uh, is, um, is sort of biblical in a sense. So, uh, so it has some, it ha they do have some meanings in there. Um, and then, uh, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I, uh, like I, I definitely tried to, um, you know, in 2048, it was, um, basically, you know, the, uh, the world that, that we're, you know, basically striving for. So. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, I, ca I can't wait to read it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And it has a happier ending too. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, uh, Todd, Jackie, do you have any any other questions or anything you'd like to uh, to leave uh, for the listeners since uh, you're here? Uh, Jackie, I'm go ahead. Really, really, really excited. I think uh, I really, really enjoyed the first book. I can't oh. wait to read the second book um, and read the character, how they've progressed and developed. And um, I love your writing style. Uh, no, we're thanks. so fortunate to have you every month, both of you actually, Todd, also. Uh, and I just, I love how you both present your ideas and it is so palatable and so smooth and you, uh, you present difficult ideas in such a great way. And so I can't wait to read it. Nice. <laughs> thanks. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, and Jackie, uh, by the way, it's great to meet you in person for the first time as well. So, uh, this is the first time we've had a chance to talk. So very nice. yeah, great, great to meet all you guys. Yeah. And Todd, it's if you're so good yeah. to see you too. Todd, if you want to, if you want to mention, uh, if you want to mention your book too, feel free. And Jackie, if you want to mention RTA. Yeah. Um, so the, my most recent book, the evolution trilogy uh, also, Anarchist Fiction is, of course, available through Liberty Under Attack. And you can also go to my website, toddboro.com, for lots of free content. And uh, you can buy a paperback through there as well. Great. Thanks, Todd. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely pick that up. Uh, I'm uh, Jackie Kerouac. I and Silas put together RTA Magazine, which um, both of these gentlemen and um, Rayo and Aura at one time too, uh, contributed to our awesome pages every month. We focus on a theme, which is um, self-liberation, self-care, and self-sustainability, uh, which we're all about just kind of breaking up with our abusive boyfriend government and kind of making our own way <laughs> and presenting it in every possible uh, perspective and angle that you can possibly imagine. Um, we're just kind of looking to help people establish themselves in, in the second realm. And so I'm happy to be here and um, just really excited to talk with you three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It's always a pleasure writing each month. So <laughs> thanks for the opportunity. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> thank you, guys. Well, I mean, we were really not much without you guys. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Matt, uh, anything else before I, I uh, you know, plug the, the where people can uh, snag books uh, one more time? Uh, no. no, that's... Uh, I think that's about it for now. <laughs> okay, fantastic. At least until your next book, right? 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, all right. Uh, um, uh, yeah. So Matthew, thanks so much again. Uh, I know people will, uh, will definitely love it and, uh, I'm excited to see the response to, uh, nonetheless. Uh, so, um, yeah, thanks again for publishing with us and yeah, thanks for, for, uh, doing this, uh, this, uh, book release live stream. It was a, it was a, it was a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for setting it up and, uh, it's really, really happy to get this one out. So <laughs> for, sure, for sure. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Writing a book is not easy. <laughs> so congratulations. <Yeah. laughs> All right, guys. And uh, there you have it. The 2048 book release party uh, live here on Jitsi. I do. I, this was, yeah, this was a good one. A, a very enjoyable. I, I definitely see do, uh, definitely see doing more of these in the future. But uh, anyway, to pick up 2048, uh, please visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Again, that link is uh, libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Uh, and if you'd like to snag the Brushfire Bundle and uh, save a little bit off the purchase price, uh, that link is libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048 bundle. And uh, regardless of your decision, keep in mind the uh, coupon code SELFLIBERATE uh, will give you 10% ten uh, off any order of books uh, since it first launched uh, and will continue indefinitely into the future. So yeah, uh, remember that one, the uh, coupon code SELFLIBERATE. And uh, yeah, while you're there, please do consider checking out uh, the rest of our catalog. Uh, we've got 20 plus books in our arsenal right now uh, with new ones coming often. Uh, at current, we've got a number of anarchist uh, liberty themed fiction available, uh, strategy guides like uh, Second Realm Book on Strategy, a uh, wide variety of Vanu and libertarian zines from the 60s and 70s, and uh, my book, Vanu A Strategy for Self Liberation, uh, if you're looking for a, a primer uh, on this uh, liberating freedom strategy. And uh, obviously, if you're an author looking for a publisher, uh, we'd love to help with that too. Uh, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash publish, uh, or you can just hit the publish with us tab there at the top of uh, the website. Uh, to learn more about our, yeah, so to, if you want to learn more about our services or uh, get a rough estimate on pricing. Uh, so yeah, thanks guys. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, until next time, always remember, Bonnie was yours for the making sure. and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers. 2048, the second volume in the Brushfire Thriller series takes place in the not-so-distant future. In the second half of the 21st century, the War of Ideas took place. The creation of Second Realms and individualist decentralized freedom cells spread across geographical regions, and the practical ideas of liberty, voluntary interaction, and peace took hold. The Free Society in 2048 is loosely based on Samuel E. Konkin III's Phases of Agorism, in which the destruction of the state would be realistically accomplished through the establishment of pockets of free individuals, black and gray markets, and the spreading of the ideas of freedom and liberty, until the demand for an overarching state was no longer perceived as essential, and individualism and voluntary interaction prevailed. The original creators of the freedom cells who led the world to a better place are still scattered about living their lives, including Maxine, the late Henry Tucker's love, and the now washed up but stubborn punk rocker Warren, still reside in the Appalachian Mountains. Maxine's nephew, Vince, and his boy Tommy, who had been band nomads ever since Tommy's mom left to pursue a materialistic quest for fortune in the never-ending rat race, went to visit Auntie Max on her homestead on Jim Mountain Road. Although Max is very happy for the visit, she has an ulterior motive. Her close friend she met during her revolutionary days, Isaac Hopper, is trapped in a geographical area previously known as New York City, now known as the State Zone. The State Zone is one of only a handful of remnant states where an overarching power-hungry government rules over its citizens with aggressive force. Together, Warren, Vince, and Tommy team up and use their knowledge, including advanced hacking techniques, low-tech ciphers, IRC encrypted chat, and cryptocurrencies to infiltrate and evade the authorities in the state zone and bring back Isaac to freedom. But their mission, the rescue of Isaac, Auntie Max's close friend and confidant, isn't going to be easy. They're up against a powerful authoritarian Hydra state a massive surveillance apparatus, a relentless and murderous police state, and a propaganda arm that will not stop until extremist terrorists known as the TRIO, Warren, Vince, and Tommy, are brought to justice. Will the TRIO pull off the rescue of Max's longtime friend, Isaac Hopper? Will the forces of good, free individuals, prevail against the safest forces of evil? Find out in the second volume of the Brushfire Thriller series, 2048, available exclusively via Liberty Attack Publications. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048, or snag them both in the Brushfire Bundle. libertyunderattack.com forward slash 2048 bundle. Libertyunderattack Publications, share your story, find your freedom.